Hello, and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update for everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. Today is November 6th, 17th, and my name is Wack Wack Attack, and we've got a lot of updates from the Rocket Pool community for you. So let's get started. Um, we have this um, comment from Langers that came in um, last night, and it was for the ODAR members. And he says to support current order members and help onboard incoming members. Joe has written a fantastic set of documentation covering um, the Oracle activities, setting up a node, setting up a testing your node, monitoring your node, and voting for order proposals. And then there's a link there that you can go to. Um, it says the current rewards period will end in 24 on in six days' time to ensure a streamlined reward tree generation. Please ensure that your archive node URL is set. We ask you to perform dry run test using the following instructions. And then there's a link. The core team are available if you need any assistance with the above. Many thanks, Rocket Pool. So I think this is a really important um, thing, right? Because we've had some delays with the tree generation from the ODAO a couple of times recently. And um, we had the issues with Etherscan recently. So all of those issues coming together, I think made it kind of necessary for um, Joe to write this documentation to make sure that uh, everyone in the order kind of knows what they're doing, when they're supposed to be doing it, and how how everything's supposed to go. So it says here, you know, they're supposed to have an archive node now. I think that's kind of new um, because some of them were using um, fallback archive nodes, I think, or weren't running locally. So it's really good that they're doing that now. and. I think hopefully, you know, on Wednesday next week, the claiming process should be a lot more straightforward. And I think it will happen in a better way than we've seen in the last couple of months. So um, this is really great. Thank you, Joe, for putting that together. And um, I really hope that everyone in the order is like on top of it and getting everything done. Because I feel like every month um, it's just like a, a new wave of... Uh, vitriol towards the ODAO as, a, as an entity, not specifically towards any members of it necessarily, except Etherscan there for a few days. But um, I think, you know, the ODAO can do a, go a long way to kind of um, fix this image by doing these small things on time and doing them in the right way. Um, and I hope that now is the time when they can do that. So this will definitely help towards that. Let's see what we have next. Next, we have this update from Joe, who's testing Atlas at the moment and testing staking on um, on the smart node stack and how much ETH is available there. So Joe loves to do these like little teasers of like screenshots of things that he's testing. And I think that's really, really cool the way he does that. And it just kind of keeps the community engaged with his work specifically. I think for me personally, out of all the team members, Joe is the one who I'm the most aware of what he's doing the most often. Like um, on a day-to-day -day basis, like Joe's really, really good at giving information about what he's kind of doing. Like those order documents that I was just talking about, like a few weeks ago, he was telling he was, he was writing those, you know, and getting them all ready. And that's really cool. I really, really appreciate about Joe. And I think that can be a model for the rest of the team because there's a sense of like opaqueness around some of the activities that some of the team members do and i totally understand that that's normal for some of the more sensitive things that are happening um like you know about business relationships or certain strategies and stuff but i think in other cases it'll be really it would be really nice if um team members could like pop into trading or maybe into one like a general channel or something and just kind of give us a um, quick update on like what they're working on that week or it doesn't have to be that day you know it can just be like that week hey like this week you know I'm working on blah 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 and I think that would really help people in the community get an idea of what people in the team are doing and it'll only help like increase transparency and increase communication that back and forth so maybe that's a suggestion for any team members listening <laughs> okay so then we've got another update from joe so he says late last week early this week uh, pateris and i developed a rule set version 2 for the rewards tree which specifically applies to the smoothing pool and it improves the following 
Mini pools that had validators which hadn't been seen by Beacon Chain yet, the deposits weren't tracked yet, are excluded from the tree. You know, if you deposited your ETH but your um, your uh, mini pool hasn't gone live yet, you shouldn't really get smoothing pool rewards, right? Like, for example, if you stake on the Tuesday before um, before a Wednesday reward, or like depending on where you are in the world, Tuesday reward. Um, if you stake, if you stake on Rocket Pool, but your node is not live, if your mini pool is not live on the Ethereum uh, Beacon Chain, then you really shouldn't get rewards for that. And I think that's kind of an edge case, but I think that's really good to put that into into the rule set. And the next one, mini pools are prorated by their time alive. So one was created halfway through the interval, they will only get half the credit. So this is going to tie into something that I'm going to talk about later. But the way that it works right now is if you have a node that's up and running, uh, that's in the smoothing pool, you can start a new mini pool at any point. Um, and as long as it gets activated before the, well, as long as you press the stake button before the, new period starting you will get rewards for that whole period for that mini pool so um, if the rewards for that period was 0.03 eth and you started a new mini pool like a day before the deadline you'd get 0.06 eth for two mini pools for that time so that i think is really um gameable right now so it's definitely something to keep in mind so joe says we put these changes in front of the oracle dao and noted our intent to deploy them in version 1.7.1 with these changes um, which would go into effect rewards interval three, which is next week, six, seven to eight days from now. So six days from now. Um, some of the members requested more time to evaluate the changes, which is fair to be honest. So we're going to push them back to interval four instead. So version 1.7.1's release isn't affected, but the rules updates won't be won't apply for version three. So we'll use the same rules as zero two through two, which is what we have right now. So. It's really cool that Joel shared that information and um, I think a lot of people kind of like paid attention to a certain point of that about the prorated for their time alive, which isn't the case right now. So we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, next we had, yeah, we're going to talk about it right now. So next we had this uh, comment from a sneaky ninja guy who was talking to um, looking for owls and um, patches about... Um, it's a, why it's a good time now to start mini pools. So right now there's two things that can really help get you nice gains in terms of mini pools starting right now. Okay. So the first thing is using Ramana's R bot. The premium right now is about 1.5%. So you'll get a 1.5% minus gas fees, like incentive for starting a mini pool, which I think works out right now to be around 0.1%. 0.015 ETH, I think. No, it's more than that. 0.15 ETH, which is not an insignificant amount of money. Not an insignificant amount of ETH, I should say. Um, so that's one thing that you can do. The other thing is the smoothing pool had its best ever month this month. And by joining, making a mini pool now, if you already have a node, then you'll get a full period's worth of... Um, smoothing pool rewards for that as well. I think the rewards are going to be like 0.04 ETH per mini pool, or maybe a little bit more than that even, like maybe into 0.05 ETH per mini pool, which is again, not an insignificant amount of money. So if you were to spin up a mini pool in the next couple of days before, um, before next Wednesday's um, new interval starting, you could potentially game that to get a nice amount of ETH um as a as a bonus basically and that could be the same as like a few months worth of um rewards you know so it's definitely definitely something worth considering so pa um, sneaky uh, sneaky ninja guy uh, patches and um owl had a really great chat um about the different things and like how it could work to play that so um yeah spin up your mini pools that can take advantage of those awards that are available right now. So next we had this comment from Astoneta.eth. It says, can we ask Binance listers? Is the statement that Rocket Pool is the third most decentralized protocol true? 
ETH, BTC, and then Rocket Pool. So the idea that they had was, you know, we have over 1700 nodes that are running now on Rocket Pool. And is that number, um, how does that compare to other like layer ones or protocols out there in terms of their validator set? So we have 1700 node operators running about 10,000 validators, let's just say. So where does that put us in the scheme of things, right? So this started a really cool discussion where people were talking about how truly, how tr amazingly decentralized Rocket Pool is. So I went and like dug up this information that says blockchain by numbers of nodes, validators. So if you look at it by um, number of nodes, which is this thing right in the middle over here, um, um, we have Bitcoin as number one, then Ethereum, then Zcash, then Filecoin, uh, Zilliqa, Monero, and then that's where uh, Rocket Pool would be. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh. However, most of these are really like well-established protocols and like they've been around for a long time. I think once withdrawals happens, we can definitely move into a position above Filecoin. Um, I think so, like above Filecoin and be the fourth um, most number of nodes for um, for any protocol out there, which is absolutely amazing. Um, Cardano is at the bottom of this list because I think this website had some issues um, scraping their data. I think they have somewhere in the region of 2,000 nodes. However, only 1,000 or so of those are able to produce blocks right now. So I think we as a community really need to push this narrative that not only is um, Rocket Pool decentralized, but it's vastly more decentralized than almost any other um, alt layer one or any other protocol. And Superfist kind of talked about this on Twitter yesterday, where he was saying that Rocket Pool has 2% of the Ethereum, um, Ethereum uh, validator share, but it runs like 15 or I think 18% of its um its nodes which is truly amazing like we're punching way above our weight in that sense so we really need to keep like as a community pushing this narrative more and pushing this um this perspective more because it's it's really wonderful like it's a definitely like a very unique um thing that we've we've developed here and i think once withdrawals happens you know we'll be right behind zcash in number four which is absolutely astonishing when you think about it. So um, I think that's something really good to focus on as a community. Okay, next we had this comment by um, Stalebeer, who's asking questions about um, how Rocket Arb would work with LEB8s. Um, and that started a really interesting discussion about um, what LEB8s would look like, what form it's going to take, and then how we can Arb it. So, there are a couple of things to note when thinking about this. The first thing we've got to know is about um, how we'll be able to split our existing mini pools. So right now we have mini pool with 16 ETH and we borrow 16 ETH from the protocol. So that mini pool that we have right now will stay exactly the same as it is, except we will get an 8 ETH credit for that mini pool. Now, that means that the one that's staying the way it is will not be able to be arbed. However, the 8 ETH credit that we get should be arbable because um, we'll be taking um, 24 ETH from the deposit pool and using that in the arb. So when this, that's the other key point here is instead of arbing 16 ETH that we get from the deposit pool, you'll be arbing um, 24 ETH. And that's for only putting 8 ETH into a mini pool. If you consider that you'll be putting um, 16 ETH into a mini pool, you know, two LEB8s, then you'll be arbing 48 ETH worth of R ETH, which should make the returns like really, really good if if we still have a premium at that point, which I don't think we'll have a premium for a while considering our uh, node operator numbers will go basically double overnight, hopefully, uh, potentially. Um, we might not have that premium for a while, but as soon as that premium then is there, you'll get a really nice incentive for um, arbing the deposit pool with that. And, you know, the, the returns will be really sweet to do that as well. So um, 
I think um, once you know LEP eights are here, that's just another advantage that we'll have going into that. And I think that's something that really makes Romano's work that he did absolutely amazing in this situation because I think so many people are going to be using it in the coming months until Atlas comes through. Um, and even after Atlas, you know, because not as many people who are starting, who already have mini pools, who already have nodes will be using it right away because they won't want to convert their existing mini pools until withdrawals so there's gonna be like a really nice period there where you'll be able to like really arb that i think um it's something worth considering i don't know if it's necessarily worth waiting for but um if you're in that situation where you'll have mini pools to start at that point it's definitely something worth looking at so that was that was a good discussion next we see this really cool thing from fizz that i mentioned yesterday about um setting up an anniversary part for rocket pool um so here's a design he said as fizz has first designed for the rocket pool one year pop pop he says pop uh, see the pop channel for more or go to the popathon discord to find the 1119 rocket pool anniversary channel and i think like um you know once they agree the final design then they'll be using um the pop delivery method so you'll have to pay some dollars a uh, fizz mentioned five dollars but i don't know if that's the number that they're going to stick with and then all that money will be going into the rocket pool um, grants management committee fund which will then be distributed to people who um, uh, are successful in getting a grant from rocket pool so you know it's for a good cause and it's 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 actually like a really good looking pop um, it looks pretty good so Thanks for putting that together, Fizz. Next, we have this post from um, Zachary Dash. Um, and before I kind of talk about what he's doing here, um, I want to talk about the protocol that he represents. So um, a few days ago, someone posted, um, and they just talked about it as well. I didn't have time to cover it in, the, in Rocket Fuel. But they were talking about this new protocol that is kind of letting you um, deposit your um your uh, crypto asset and then getting upfront yield on that whether that's like interest or the yield and then you lock it for a period of time and then you get you can unlock it and get your original deposit back so the 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 protocol is called flash stake and um you know they got like this snazzy website and it explains what it is and it says you know f all the yield none of the weight flash stake allows you to lock up crypto and an instant upfront yield from the future then they've got like this clip from anthony sasano talking about it how it's a very innovative um protocol so the way it works is you take your asset and for example you know your eth and then you tell them how much you want to deposit so i want to deposit 10 eth and then you deposit it for um 730 days so right now if you did that you would get um up front um 0.234 eth uh like in interest for that which works out to be 1.16 um percent apy and then you also got 23,500 flash tokens which works out to be um 2.89 percent apy now a lot of people thought you know this is kind of scammy um it, it, like it's got rug pull written all over it but the reason why i'm mentioning it is because um zach works for zachary works for flash stake and he came into trading today to kind of like talk about what what the project is and he says hello and then some of the people who were talking about it and he says no scam here with a group of 15 people and he talks about how they got a grant from Aave to to like launch the software launch the protocol and then kind of just spent a while talking about what it is and and how it works um so you know owl was asking him some questions and then other people kind of getting involved and in asking questions as well and about how it works so it's basically like yield time traveling so like um owl kind of sums it up here he says okay i give you 10 eth or 100 eth you give me 8.8 .8 eth back from future yield after one year i get 100 eth back and um then um you know they just went into like a, a big discussion about how it works so i think um right now they don't have our eth but i think the reason why it was mentioned in trading the days because you know it says over here more strategies coming soon so i think that more strategies one of those is going to be our eth so um depending on your level of degenness um 
it might be another way to get some yield on your R ETH, um, upfront yield as well. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on if that is something that you might be interested in. But Zachary was like, like I said, he was in um, trading for quite a while today, answering questions, trying to like clarify how it's not a scam. And then uh, Owl at the end says, um, it's tough, not, it's definitely not for me, but I get it now. And then, um, yeah, Zach was saying just want to get out of the scam category. And um, Al says the main reason why he's not wanting to get into it is because it's um, smart contract risk and like adding more smart contract risk on top of Rocket Pool smart contract risk. And uh, Zach says that's 100% fair and that's one of their hurdles. So that's all the Rocket Pool stuff out of the way. Let's spend a few minutes going over um, the community talking about the FTX stuff. So the first thing was, you know, the new CEO of... Um, of FTX was the guy who was the CEO of Enron as it was after it collapsed. Um, and he, he said, never in my career have I seen a complete failure of corporate controls and such complete absence of trustworthy financial information as occurred here. Like he was really, really like harsh about it and um, talking about how just it was horribly run, um, horribly run uh, company and totally disastrous. And people in trading spent a while talking about that. And then next we had this really interesting thing that came up. Um, it says Zero Hedge, Zero, no, FX Hedge, sorry, uh, released a statement saying Bahamas government ordered Bankman Freed to hack FTS system and transfer assets to the Bahamas government account court filing. So nobody really knows what on earth was going on with that. And people were kind of shocked about like is this real and how can this happen so it turns out that the friday hack might have been something along these lines it might have been the bahamas government getting crypto out of ftx and then holding it as eth it's so, like it's nearly two hundred thirty thousand eth right now which is an astronomical amount of eth and yeah, um, so here's you know C CNBC reporting on the same article. Like it says, um, FTX suggests Bankman Freed's transferred assets to the Bahamas government, um, <laughs> which is absolutely not so. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what on earth is going on out there. Um, so next, um, we had some more um, rumors about contagion and and collapses of really really big crypto institutions. Uh, one of them was Jump Crypto. Um, where there was reports going around that they are almost um, insolvent and they're going to go bust. And then they came out and released a statement saying, given the rumors flying around, we want to debunk a few things. Jump Crypto is not shutting down. We believe we're one of the most well-capitalized and liquid firms in crypto. We're still actively investing and in trading. So if you're looking for funding, please get in touch. And then Jasper said, start the timer. Because like it's one of those situations where, you know, what are they supposed to say? Because any kind of denial of, um of uh problems is not is indistinguishable from kind of like presenting a confident front and masking problems so yeah let's see if jump crypto is going to collapse it seems like it's not going to however one firm that might collapse is um crypto lender genesis seeks one billion dollar emergency loan by monday so reports a few days ago, Genesis is the program that runs um, Gemini's crypto earn program with their GUSD returns that they give 8.5% on. I don't know if it's like 8.5%, it used to be 8.5%. Um, so Genesis is parent company plugged a hole that was in their balance sheet, but it seems like it might be worse than it was of earlier thought. So this, I think, might be the next, um, the next big um, institution to go down um, I forgot the name of their parent company I think it's like DC something digital D yeah I'm not sure exactly what the name is but um, it seems like um, it seems like bad times are ahead for Genesis and their parent company so um, we're still not through this people in trading are still talking about this every day and thankfully now we're kind of like talking about other things a little bit more but um, we still talk about this every day so on that note, I'm going to end today's episode. Um, I hope you're all doing well out there in Rocket Pool land, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.